to be here and a privilege. There's a lot of uh, great potential, creativity, brains in here. And to see this in our Coptic church where our professional world comes together with our spiritual world is amazing. I'm going to start with a story that happened back in the Chinese history. There was uh, an emperor who had uh, no kids. So uh, he decided he needs to pick a successor for himself. So what he did is that he, um, he announced in the Chinese empire to uh, anybody that would like to bring their kids to me and I will choose one of them to be my successor. Hundreds of kids came to, to him and um, he gave each one of them a seed. And he told them, I'm gonna give you a seed. I'm gonna see you in one year. I wanna see what you did with that seed. So each kid took the seed, went back home for a year, and they planted the seed in the pot. One of the kids, his seed, nothing came out of it. He kept watering the seed every single day, but nothing is happening. He cannot see any fruit or any plant or anything coming out of the pot. And every single day, he still watered the seed. So the year passed and he was like, mom, I don't think I can go back. Nothing happened. There's something wrong. Something wrong I did maybe, but there, there, nothing came out. Why would I go? Her mom told him, no, you need to go. You worked hard on this. You watered every single day. Just take your pot and go and tell them what happened. So he did. And the uh, emperor kind of went and saw every single person. All the people, they want, somebody had a flower, somebody had a big plant, somebody had some fruit, somebody had this and that. Everybody had something in their hands except him. And he kind of felt like, wow, this is a lot of good things around here. I'm coming with this empty pot. So anyways, the, king, the emperor actually interviewed every single one of these kids. And then after he was done with seeing all of them, he gathered them all here and he told them, um, there's something that you guys need to know. That seed that I gave you was boiled and was not viable. So there was no way that seed would have got all these good things that you guys brought me. But there's only one person who was truthful, who was trustful, who has integrity, and this is this kid over here, and he's gonna be my next successor. So what I'm going with the story is, in what I'm talking about today, my topic is integrity. In our life, and especially in our fields as medical professional, dentists, pharmacists, integrity is a big deal, okay? There's a lot of meanings and a lot of definitions about integrity. And, but it kind of has a lot of good meanings into it. And if you, a person of integrity, no matter what the situation is, you're gonna do and say the right thing, okay? I tell this to my kids all the time. I tell this to, I find myself telling it to my assistants all the time. If you do something wrong or something wrong happens, be brave enough and be honest enough to come tell me. Because the, the, my reaction to what happened is gonna be much better if I trust you. But if I don't, if I lose trust, and if I heard from outside about what happened or found it out myself, and now I knew that you were hiding it from me or you were lying about it, it's gonna be a big problem, okay? So a person of integrity, no matter how, what the situation is, is always gonna say the truth, is always gonna stand up to his beliefs. When I turned 18, in Egypt you get your license when you turn 18, okay? So when I turned, I turned 18, I remember, because I was fascinated with cars and driving, I, my dad, before we went for the licensing exam, he said, if you make an accident, you come and tell me. If I find out that you made an accident, don't tell me, you're going to be punished and you're going to have the car. Okay? So I, I remember I turned 18 on a Wednesday. Thursday, I got my license. Friday was my first accident. <laughs> okay? It wasn't a big accident, but it was an accident. So as I'm driving back home, I'm like, it can be easily fixed. I can go in Egypt, there's people, the, the technicians are very creative. They can do things 
and uh, mask things very, very amazing, okay? I was like, I can stop by the shop that's down the street and have him fix it and like nothing happened or go home and take the consequences. But then I remembered what my dad told me. If you tell me the punishment is going to be a lot less than if I find out. So luckily that time I took the right decision. I went back to him and I told him and it wasn't a big deal. Thank God. Okay. Other times, not as much, but this time it was okay. So a person that stands up to his beliefs that's truthful is a person of integrity okay integrity has to do with what your core values are and what you believe in okay if you are a person that goes by your own beliefs you're going to have an integrity but you have to stand up to these values okay uh, a lot of us in our profession at dentists or even medicine we some people would see patients with dollar signs on their head. What does that mean? A person comes in and is driving a Mercedes, okay? I'm gonna treat him, plan more things for him than a guy that's coming in that's driving a Toyota Camry or had one of his friends drop him off. You see what I'm saying? So we see patients and people or dentists or doctors treat patients as what am I gonna get out of them, not as human beings, okay? This is very crucial because when, when it's you and your patient by yourself and that patient put trust, trust in you, at that point you have a decision to make whether I'm going to treat that person as a human being or what I'm going to think about him is what I'm going to gain from him. Or how much can I make, how much money can I make out of this person? These patients are clueless. And trust me, patients have no clue about medicine or dentistry or whatever. I have patients that come in and tell me, oh, I had to leave my last dentist. He was an amazing dentist, amazing doctor. And I look at the x-rays, I was like, yeah, okay. But you look at his work and it was horrible. But just because he was a nice person, they think that he was an amazing dentist. Okay? So patients have no clue what happens to them. But it's between you and them, and you and your values, how you're going to treat these patients. Are you going to be a person that treating them as a human being, or are you treating them as a money maker? The thing that I try to always keep in my, my head when I'm working to put me back in where I should treat these patients is treat them as family. If this guy sitting here is my dad, what I would do to him. If this woman is my sister or my mom, what I would do to him. And believe it or not, when you treat people the right way, when you treat them with integrity, it comes back to benefit you. You might not benefit as much from this case because you became a person that goes be according to his values, but word spreads around that you're a man of integrity. If you want to leave a legacy for yourself, in your, with your friends, in your career, in whatever it is, be a man, that, be a man or a woman, like you stand up to your values. Live by your values and the beliefs and the core values that we were brought up with. And there's no much yani, higher or better values than what Jesus Christ puts in us. So if you, you want to leave a legacy in your life, be a person of integrity that lives according to his values that was put in you on Jesus Christ. And not just when treating patients, when you're with friends, sometimes, we, sometimes you can find people that they friend you because they want something out of you. Okay? Sometimes we use God himself as a tool, thinking that we're going to be more, I'm go, if I'm good with God, he's going to make me more successful. So if you look at this relationship, there's something wrong. This person is with God, not because he loves God, but because he wants something out of him. Okay, something to think about Why in, my, in your relationships with your friends, with your colleagues, with your family and with God and with your patients, what is that drives that relationship? Is it your values? Is treating that person with love or it's something else? The best definition I think of integrity also is doing the right thing when no one is watching. Okay. 
again, when you're by yourself with that patient, patient trusts you, what are you going to do to that patient? Is it the best for him or the best for yourself? Okay? We all remember the song that we used to sing when they were little in Sunday school. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see, right? Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see, because the Father up above is looking down. And it will be careful, little eyes, what you see. This song should be in your head playing all day long. Because I think if, if we go by that, well, God is watching me, a lot of things that we do is going to be different. A lot of things that we say is going to be different. A lot of actions that we take are going to be different. But our excuse all the time, well, everybody's doing it. Everybody cheats. Everybody goes online and finds the answers for the exams. Everybody cuts corners to make uh, dentures faster. Everybody cuts corners. Everybody wants fast reward. Want more money with less work. Everybody's doing it. This is the excuse that we all do and we all say. All right? Me included. But no. Wrong is wrong no matter what. And right is right even if no one is doing it. So don't don't use the excuse that everybody is doing the same, doing the same thing. Again, when you look at integrity, there's a lot of uh, virtues and characters that you can get out of the word integrity. When I looked into the word integrity more and more, it comes from the word integer, and the word integer means whole, like a whole number. There's no decimal, there's no fraction in it. And we all know in calculus, uh, integration and differentiation. What does differentiation do? It divides. But what does integration does? It brings together as something that's whole. What am I going with this? A big problem that we face, and we face a lot in our Coptic community, in the youth, is different faces. We put different faces. Back in the Greek history, they were big on plays. And in a play, a person, would play a different role. So he would go backstage and put a mask on and come play that role. And then he would go back and put a different face or a different mask and then comes back on stage and gives a different role. So different mask, different role. That guy was called Hippocritus, which is hypocrite, okay? Unfortunately, we sometimes, me as Fedi, I'm different at home I'm, than work, then church, then friends, then when I go, when I visit my friends in Egypt, I'm a different person. I put different masks. I'm not authentic. If you live, if you live by integrity, you're going to be authentic. You're going to be the same person no matter where you are, with your goods and bads. So how do you test yourself if I live by integrity or not? Is, do you have different masks that you put on, depending on who you're dealing with? So when you're at church, you have a, a certain language that you speak. Uh, and then when we're with friends, we have a completely different language that we speak. And then in front of my parents and something, and then in front of my wife or kids or friends, family is something else. This is a test. If you're a person that lives by integrity, you're going to be the same person no matter what. Don't you all have these kind of friends that are just themselves no matter what happens? And this is the person that you usually trust and like the most because you can tell they're not being fake. Nobody likes fake. So the same way we judge others and say they are fake and we don't like them, make sure first that we are not fake. Unfortunately, I say this with my wife sitting back there, so she probably can come here and tell me that I can be fake sometimes. But we all fight this. We all go through the same challenge of uh, being fake. Try to be authentic. Be yourself no matter where your situation is, okay? The Bible tells us, he who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. He who perverts his ways will become known, will become exposed. Another driving story from my days back in Egypt. You know, when you drive in Egypt, it's like bumping cars. There's a lot of cars, it's very tight. A lot of the times you can hit a person next to you and keep going, and, and if it's not a big, huge, yani blow, it's okay, you just keep going. So I'm turning in a roundabout, okay, and there's gazillion cars around me, and I'm driving between the cars, and I kind of hit the guy next to me a little bit, but no big bang, no shattered glass or anything. So I, I look at him, he looks like he's okay with it, so we just keep, we keep going. I kept driving. 
And then I stopped later on, I looked at the car, it's a small scratch, it's, it's okay, you know, you can be parked in the car, a car goes scratched. So that time I decided I'm not going to tell my dad. It's a simple scratch, nothing happened, we don't have to do anything, the car is scratched everywhere anyways, so it's okay. Well, unfortunately, a few days later, I was back from school, eating uh, dinner, and my dad is taking a nap, and the doorbell rings. So I go and open the door, and there's a police officer in front of the door. Like something that I only saw in movies. I didn't know it actually happens that a police officer come, come to your house. And I was like, uh, can I help you, sir? He's like, is this the, is this the house of Amir Macarius? That's my dad. I was like, uh, yes. Uh, what's going on? He had an accident a couple of days ago in this area, and uh, the guy, other guy filed the report, and he needs to go to the police station right now. I was like, can you tell me exactly when and where it happened? He was like, a couple of days ago in that roundabout. I was like, oh gosh, this is hitting me so hard. So I have to go wake up my dad from his nap, which is a big thing. <laughs> you never wake up your dad from a nap. I have to wake him up and tell him that he needs to get dressed to go to the police station because somebody filed a report against him because the car was in his name. So somebody filed a, a, a report against him for an accident that I did. Okay, so you can imagine the, that minute that I walked to his room, how I wanted to like die, <laughs> like vanish, like vanish, like something would happen, the house would follow me, something. It t taught me a lesson. In order to be a real man, you have to stand up and be a man of integrity, no matter what the situation is. Again, another verse in, uh, in Proverbs, the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. So if you every day remind yourself, I want to live to, up to my values that Jesus Christ has put in me, it will guide us in our life to do the right thing. A very nice prayer that I find that Jesus himself had prayed. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Now what? How can we lose our integrity? Uh, how can our integrity get corrupted? It's by slowly, by slowly, being confirmed to the world. When the world and its desires, when the world and its expectations, when the world values start sneaking into me, that's how I lose being a person of integrity. So if evil finds its way into, your, into you through very simple ways, it will affect you and it will not make you stand up to the values and the belief and you're not going to be a person of integrity. So be careful. So God is telling them, telling, is praying and saying, do not, I don't want them out of this world. I want them in the world, but protect them from the evil one. So our mission as Christians is to be in the world, not out of the world. Because we always hear this, we have to be different, we have to be different, we have to be different. We are different, we're not like the world, but that doesn't mean we're secluded. No, we're not secluded, we're, with, we're integrated, we're in the community and the society for a reason. St. Paul says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in tri triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place for we listen to this for we are to god the fragrance of christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing god is using us as, a, as his fragrance and us being in the medical field we have an advantage that we see people we what made me go into dentistry is i made an i made kind of two comparison what i want to deal with i was going either engineering or medicine I know completely different, but anyways, uh, engineering, somebody told me, you, would you like to be dealing with fixing stuff that are solid, like material, or would you like to be dealing with human beings? And that helped me make my decision. We have a privilege in our profession that we deal privately, okay? And people trust us one-to-one. -one. So we have that advantage of being able to be that fragrance. Because if somebody in another profession that goes and sits in a cubicle every single day, 8 to 5, Monday to Friday, he might not be as exposed to others like we are. 
So this is a talent. We all know the parable of the talent. This is a talent that God had given you to have the opportunity to speak to others, to act with others, to deal with others. So that's why God is using us as the salt of the world, the light of the world. And we have to use that talent. It's upon us to go and change people. It has nothing to do with how much knowledge you know. It's how you deal with people and how people see you. If you're a person of integrity, people will trust you. You have a much better chance of saying, if you come and talk about Jesus, but you cut corner treating the patients or treat them badly or take, talk behind their back in a bad way, your talk is not the same like your actions. I'd rather you not talk but have the action. If you're a person of integrity, you would have the actions. So test yourself about how you live up every day. Do you give yourself excuses and see others do it too? Do you live up to your core values that you were brought up with in church with Jesus Christ? Would you say that everything I do, I can stand in front of Jesus and say, yes, I did this and I did it because you put it in me. Are you truthful? Are you honest? Are you authentic? Ask yourself all these questions. It's, it takes, and it's not like you have integrity or you don't. We all can live up to it. We all know the core values. We just, when our beliefs comes with our action and words, that's when you're authentic, that's when you're not fake, and that's how you live as a person of integrity. And uh, glory be to God forever and ever.